Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hunk Room Gaming Channel. Today we will be looking at Battletech, the video game. The game was funded by Kickstarter and it was created by Hairbrain Schemes. It was published by Paradox Entertainment, I believe it is. And it is about mechs. Now there is another game about uh, mechs, which is on Steam. And that is Mech Warrior Online. The two games are not to be confused and they are very different in execution. There are also different playstyles and they're about a different aspect of the Battletech universe. Battletech is pretty much like Warhammer in that it has a board game component and has multitudes of video games at this point created for it. Now, originally, MechWarrior was picked up by Microsoft Studios. Microsoft Studios shut down. Piranha Entertainment picked up the license from Microsoft Studios and created MechWarrior Online. Whereas Battletech picked up the licensing from Battletech the board game and created a video game resembling the board game. Battletech the video game has a playstyle very similar to that of XCOM games, whereas your move, your mechs, you have a move phase and then you have an action phase. In the move phase, you can decide if you want to move part of the way or if you want to sprint, which is basically using both actions to move. You cannot move, stop, decide if you want to take an action and then move again. You can only move once. So you can either sprint to a location and basically that mech is out of this particular round, or you can move to a location slowly, closer distance from your starting point and then take an action. The mechs also have jump jets, which means that you can jump up reasonable canyons, depending on how many uh, jump jets you have. And the problem is that you only have one lance. One lance is four mechs. Usually a lance formation is an assault, a heavy, a medium, and a light mech. The light mechs can move around really quickly, they have low armor, and they don't have that many weapons. They're pretty heavy hitters, but they don't have a lot of weapons. Now, medium mechs are the compromise between a heavy and a light. They move decently well, and they also have decent armor, but they have a lot of weapons. Their armor is usually a much lower than that of a heavy mech, if you set them up properly for maximum output, damage output. Of course, you can remove weapons and have them well armored, as much as a heavy mech, pretty much. An assault mech is a very heavy hitter. They usually have a lot of hard points. And if you max them out, they still have a lot of armor to give. Now, an assault is basically a devastating machine. It is meant to take out a one mech with one alpha strike. Alpha strike is firing all weapons at once. Now for weapons, you have auto cannons and a gauss. Those are your projectile based weapons. You have lasers. Those are self-explanatory. A PPC, which is a projectile-based energy-only weapon. It doesn't require ammo. It basically creates plasma and then shoots that out at high velocity. It creates a lot of heat, but it also has a heavy punch, which can knock a mech off balance by a moderate amount. Then you have your missiles. Missiles are long-range and short-range missiles. Short-range missiles are technically unguided rockets which means they require a line of sight. Long range missiles are guided rockets, which don't require a line of sight. And the final component of your mech is the mech warrior you put into it. All mech warriors have four skill trees you can go down and every five points you get one skill. They have 15 points total and at the 15th point, you don't have a skill that you can pick. You can pick two of the five point skills and one 10 point skill. So choose wisely and the 10 point skill must be from the trees you chose your first two points from. So basically in one skill tree, you can have two skills and in another skill tree, you can have one skill. So what are the four skill trees? Well, there are gunnery, piloting, guts, and finally you have tactical. Gunnery is the accuracy of your weapons, base accuracy of weapons. Piloting is the movement, the maximum movement in sprint plus maneuverability and melee damage. Guts is your survivability and stability maximum. Tactical is your uh, LRM firing without a line of sight. So having an LRM boat, you would want to put a tactical pi a mech warrior in it. We don't call them pilots, we call them mech warriors. And that's where the term mech warrior comes from. It comes from Battletech video game, but it is specific to the pilots. And that's why Battletech and mech warrior 
are two different games with two different playstyles, borrowing two different components of a game that has already existed. Now let's get on with the review now that I have explained the game. Many of you have played XCOM, I presume. And if you have played XCOM and you liked XCOM, this game might be for you. But I wouldn't jump the gun on it. The reason it took me so long to create this review is because I wanted to beat the game and give it an honest shot before I reviewed it. There was a lot of noise online for multitude of reasons why this game wasn't good and I don't agree with most of them. There was also a lot of arguments why this game is really good and I don't agree with most of them. Now XCOM gave you a real feel of progression in the game. Your shots started to hit as you upgraded your webs. You had greater shots, uh, chance to hit and you can even have a 100% chance to shoot someone. The second thing is skills on a cooldown or limited availability were limited to your mech warrior, uh, to your squad member. Here it's not like that. They use a team pool of resources called morale and you use that to, for your special skills. You only have two. You have vigilance and you have concentrated shot. Concentrated shot, basically, you get to choose what to shoot on an enemy mech. The rest of the time, it depends on your angle, kind of, what you hit. And I will tell you why it kind of depends on your angle. Because depending on your angle to the enemy mech, if you're flanking on the left and the right, you have higher chances to hit on the left or the right, depending on where you're shooting from. But the thing is, you always hit a center torso at least once, and you always hit a left or a right leg at least once. I've noticed that. Also, the chance to hit the head is very, very common. I will show it off in the video and I will tell you exactly when it happens. Actually, I will show it off right now and I will tell you. So, my mech was not destroyed and yet my pilot was killed because I got hit in the head four consecutive times. And one time, a leg was destroyed, which knocked down the mech, which killed the pilot. That shouldn't be acceptable. That's just too much. Some people have said it's a 1% chance to hit. Well, 1%, that's fine. But if the enemy fires off two Alarim 20s, which fire off 20 missiles, and one of them hits the cockpit or the head of the mech, you get injury to your pilot. Every time, even if the armor of the head holds, you get injury to your pilot. Now the head has 40 armor, which means it can get hit by a missile 10 times at full damage and survive, and the structure will get exposed. After the 10th shot, the structure will get exposed. But your mech warrior takes damage every single time the head is hit. So first of all, you have no reason to have 40 armor on your head. Unless you get hit by a PPC, which is highly uncommon, or you get hit by a AC-10, which does 60 damage and can knock out the head basically from one shot. Or you get hit by a AC-20, which does 100 damage and can knock out the head from one shot. Which is also a low chance. Unless somebody does a cold shot, then the probability jumps to about maybe 14 or 20%. But still a low probability. This is something that will happen often. You will always have at least one pilot mech warrior down due to a head injury uh, a headshot basically and it is it, it gets ridiculous the longer you stay in the game second you're missing with salvos all the time you're missing shots all the time 85 95 percent hit chance doesn't matter one of the lasers is going to miss one of the guns is going to miss so uh, just because you have a high percent chance to hit it doesn't mean that you're going to hit and that's just the gameplay since this review is getting a little bit long, long-winded, at least for me, I will go over the story really quickly. Basically, the story revolves around Kamea, who is a princess who gets betrayed by her uncle and her cousin, the uncle's daughter, betrays her and kills a mentor. And that mentor happens to be, to have been your mentor as well. They don't have great motivations, the uncle and the cousin. They don't have the proper catalyst for their behavior because their behavior is rather despicable they they create an authoritarian government they murder people they experiment on people but they don't have the catalyst to make that happen um usually people who have this kind of response to the world have some sort of catalyst now i will not get into politics because that's just a beehive i don't want to i i don't want to poke with a stick 
but usually in the world there there's some kind of explanation for the tro for for human behavior and here we don't have that it's just her uncle tells her that she should do something with the government and she says well no uncle i don't want to run the country that way and so he overreacts in the most ridiculous way and just overthrows the government kills people puts them in jail uh his own niece who he raised like a daughter he betrays and tries to murder uh he executes forty thousand people just just for uh, a political ploy basically and it, it, it just doesn't make sense and they're not interesting characters because kamea who's the princess is a good person who doesn't do anything wrong basically and the one time they try to make a character complicated complex and complicated uh it backfires so the mechanics of the game are basically poorly implemented uh, you will have more frustration than then actually the game is worth the story is worth the gameplay is worth. the progression of your mechs is not great you will spend uh, at least 20 minutes in a fight and most of the time is just missing shots even if you have high percentage uh, high percentage chance to hit it is just not what i expected i've been playing mech warrior since mech warrior 4 and i've been waiting for a good substitute or at least a good continuation of the series since that time i haven't gotten it in this one if you're a fan of battletech maybe it's worth 40 dollars now the studio managed to collect on kickstarter managed to collect over 11 times the original goal of 20 uh 250 thousand so i don't know what the excuse is there why they didn't play test the game a little bit more i guess because most of the issues are playtesting. The game also crashes. It is also slow, uh, too slow for the graphics it has. It requires a lot of computing power. It is also not friendly to hard drives. You almost require a, well, you don't require, but it is better to have a solid state drive to run it. And the game is pretty new. So I guess you can call that acceptable, but I wouldn't. I don't find it acceptable, at, le at least not for it, for what it has. Uh, some of the camera angles are not perfect, and there's just too many issues for me to give it a good score. I cannot give it a great score, especially for the price tag. It priced it at $40, uh, $40 uh, a pop. I have to judge it as a $40 game. And don't forget that m some AAA titles, fully complete, fleshed out, bug free, titles are $45 so I have to judge it almost as a AAA title and I can't give it a high score I'm going to give it a five uh, the problems are just too many too numerous and the game is not that interesting to play it is more frustrating than anything else some of the hardliners will say well it's a difficult game yeah it's a difficult game but it's not difficult like let's say Dark Souls 2 which praises itself on how difficult it is actually it is as difficult as Dark Souls 2 because most of the time the game basically cheats you out of a victory or a successful strike and it starts to feel that way pretty early on and it just stacks up and stacks up and stacks up and it's i've played it for over 50 hours and it was difficult it was difficult to get through the game i didn't find it difficult to get through elix which has a lot of gameplay problems but the game was interesting. I got I got through it. I got through it three times. Uh, Kingdom Come. It was crashing. It was a little bit buggy in the beginning. But I got through it. And that's what I'm saying. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. It, the story was garbage. And, and it was crashing as well. And had a lot of bugs in multiplayer as well. But you know what? I got through it. This game, it was so difficult. It was probably the most difficult project I have to, I, I, I've had to date. I've been reviewing games for at least two years. Should you buy it? I don't think so. Wait for a sale. Wait for at least you know 30 percent off wait for the summer sale maybe maybe it will come out with a sale on either steam Greenman gaming or whatever you use to get your games get it in a sale it's not worth the 40 dollars and i will give it a five out of ten which is the lowest score i've had to give yet i i gave what was it far cry 5 a higher score and i didn't like that game i didn't get through it i played it only nine hours or ten hours something like that maybe that was my problem with far cry but you know what i'll take that criticism i didn't finish it this game i finished and i forced myself to finish it basically because i didn't want this review to be the same as the far cry 6, uh, 5 review and i'm highly disappointed it was a game that i had high hopes for because i do like the xcom games i finished basically the three of them but there's two with an expansion so 
Thank you very much for listening to me for a long time. And uh, I hope you have a better time than I did if you buy the game. Thank you very much. See you next time.